Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to work on putting together another portable ham radio antenna that I can use for either parks on the air or field day or just portable operations in general. So a couple of months ago I got a set of ham sticks and I started using these with my motorcycle. Now I wasn't using these while I was riding the motorcycle but what I was able to do is ride the motorcycle to a park or wherever park the motorcycle and then put these on some mounting brackets that I have on the bike and operate portable from there. But now that it's getting to be winter time here in Connecticut, uh, I wanted to kind of make up another configuration for them so that I could use them with the car. So I thought about getting a magnet mount and trying the antennas that way. Basically what I would do is keep the magnet mount inside the car here until I stop, get to a park, quick throw it up on the roof, deploy the antenna, operate, and then put everything back in the car when I'm done. So I know other hams have been using the magnet mounts with a pretty reasonable amount of success, and I may still go that route. But I was looking around the shack today, and I found some pieces and parts laying around, and I thought maybe I would try to make a mount out of that stuff before I went out and bought a magnet. Anyway, let's take a look at what I've got in mind. So here's a look at an old antenna system that I've had laying around forever. I think I've had this thing since I was a teenager. This was originally intended to be used with a 102 inch stainless steel CB whip. And you can see that it's just an L bracket with some holes in it. I think there were U clamps here at one point. You could mount this to a mast and put it up on your house and use it as a CB antenna if you want. You can see it has these sort of aluminum radials that bolt into this plate here. They're not really fully inserted in here right now, but there's just some screws that kind of hold this in and clamp them down. Now, like I said, I haven't used this thing in years. It's been up in my attic. But what I think I'm going to do is ditch the radials, just use this L bracket and the antenna mount for the ham stick, and we'll put this up on a pole, put some radials on it, and see how it works. It should be quick and easy to set up and take down when I get to a park. So in this video, I'm going to admit right up front that I spent way more time and put way more effort into this bracket for these ham sticks than I probably should have. All things being equal, it would have been a lot easier and probably cheaper in the long run if I just went and bought something commercially available made out of stainless steel. But I forged on anyway and completed the project just for the sake of doing it, I guess. But as always, just like with all my other videos, the whole point here is to just show you guys what I'm doing and inspire you to do something on your own. You guys can learn from the mistakes that I make along the way and not repeat them and save yourselves a little bit of time. But anyway, let's get on with the build. So here's a closer look at the antenna bracket that we're working with here today. You can see that it's made just out of galvanized steel and then has sort of a clamp on it that screws on in three places to hold those aluminum radials in place. And then it's got this 3 8 antenna mount in the middle. I think that's what these are called. You can see it's got an SO239 on the bottom. This old antenna mount looked a little bit suspect, so I was doing some continuity checks with this, and I realized that we've got a problem because of the galvanized steel here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I start off and do just a basic continuity test, you can see I've got the leads of the multimeter basically shorted together, but touching the threads of the SO239, you can see we're getting about 0.4 ohms resistance, which sounds about right. That's probably the resistance in the leads themselves. So theoretically what should happen is this outer part of the SO239 should be shorted essentially to the base of the bracket. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this old antenna mount off of here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this connection here to make sure that when this mounts in the base of the antenna mount is in good electrical contact with the bracket. And the other thing I'm going to do is take this clamp off of here because I'm not going to need it for what I'm doing right now. So here's a look at the bracket with the antenna mount off of it. And you can see that it's pretty well corroded and rusty in here. So what I'm going to do, and I've already started it as you may be able to tell, is kind of grind this down with my Dremel tool and get down to bare metal here so that we have good contact. So I'm taking a look at the old antenna mount here and I think I'm going to reuse it instead of replacing it with one of the new ones that I have. The reason for that is that this one comes with a relatively thick insulator between the base of the antenna mount and the radiating part of the antenna mount. So it may be a little bit hard to see but what ends up happening is this insulator goes down from the top part of the antenna this part goes up from the bottom, and both of them have a fairly thick shoulder on them. What that does is that ensures 
that the center radiating part of the antenna mount doesn't short to the inner hole wall of the bracket here. All of the newer style antenna mounts that I have don't have the same thickness shoulders that these have because they're made for thinner metal. So like I said, this one's in reasonable shape, so I'm going to just reuse it just to make sure I don't have any shorting issues. So you can see I've got the bracket all cleaned up. I dremeled underneath the antenna mount and around all of these holes because I'm going to end up using these for the radials that I'm going to put on here. So before I go any further, I'll grab the multimeter here and we'll do a quick resistance check here just to make sure everything is looking good. So if I touch one lead to the bracket and one lead to the SO239, you should be able to see there we're getting a nice low resistance, which is what we want. And then just as another sanity check, I'll do a continuity check between the base of the SO239 and the radiating part of it. And you should be able to see that we are open, which is also what we want to see. So the next thing I'm going to do is come up with some way to attach radials to this thing. Probably mostly using hardware that I've already got laying around. So what I think I'm going to do is use my surplus military canopy poles to mount the antenna bracket. You can see that these pads can accept weights. You can put bricks or rocks or something on there to hold it down. So here's a look at the finished mount. You can see I've just got pieces of 12 gauge bare copper crimped and soldered onto ring terminals and then crimped onto these bullet style connectors. And then I've got the radials connected to the male part of the bullet connector so that I can easily unplug and switch in different length radials. Now I've got six positions on the mount because there were six holes in here I could use, but through the testing I've done so far, it looks like three radials is gonna be sufficient. If I ever want to expand and use all six, I can do that, but probably won't need to. I've got a couple of U clamps here on one of my military poles. This is a four foot section. I'm gonna stick with this for now. Now the original holes that were in the back of the bracket were one inch spacing, and these clamps have an inch and a quarter span, so I had to drill new holes. My drill bits were dull. I didn't end up doing a very good job at drilling the holes, but other than that, I'm fairly happy with the overall outcome here. So I've got my 40 meter ham stick mounted to the mount. I played around with it yesterday and I got the antenna set so the SWR is low in the voice portion of the 40 meter band. Okay, so anyway, what I'll do now is pull the 40 meter antenna off and see if we can get set up for 20. So I've got the 20 meter ham stick all tuned up and I've got three 16 and a half foot radials. So I did try it with just one radial just to see what would happen. I couldn't get the SWR below about two to one or so. But once I got the other two radials on and set up, I was able to tune the antenna right where I wanted it. So I've got the 15 meter ham stick set up. I use the same procedure. I cut quarter wavelength radials, in this case 11 feet, and then I tuned the antenna. Well, actually on this one, I didn't have to. I mounted it on the mount and checked it with the analyzer and it was actually already more or less right where I wanted it. So what I'd like to do now is set up my 80 meter antenna and see if I can get that to work. And what I thought I would do is couple all of the radials together to form the length of radial that I need. So the idea here now is to crimp on these female bullet connectors onto the free ends of all the radials so that I can couple them together. If I put the 80, 15, and 20 meter radials together, I should have enough to make radials for 80 and not need to cut any additional wire. So I've got the 75 meter antenna all set and kind of tuned up. Now it seems to tune up best right around 3810 or so. Now really I wanted to be closer to 3950 or so, more at the top end of the band. It seems like a lot of the generals kind of hang out higher up, but it just wouldn't tune up too well up there. But I'm really not getting much span. The SWRs seem to rise pretty sharply when I get away from that center frequency. Another thing that I'm going to do is use colored electrical tape so that I can coordinate the antenna with the radials cut for that antenna. So for instance, I have some red tape here for the 20 meter ham stick. I'll wrap that around the bottom and then put red on each one of these radials so that I can keep these together and don't get them mixed up. So I've got the FT891 set up here and connect it up to the antenna. Right now I've got the 80 meter configuration set up, so I'm gonna tune around and see what I can hear. I'll make it to length for you. 
Okay, so not a ton of activity on 80 meters right now, but it is, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon, the Friday after Thanksgiving, so that's kind of to be expected. But the stations that I am hearing, including this last station, which was an AM station, uh, were all loud and sounded pretty good. So it is starting to get dark out here, and I want to test out the receive on 40 and 20 before the sun goes down. So I'm going to switch over to 40 first, see what we can hear there. So there's a lot of stations on 40 meters right now and they all seem pretty strong, but the sun is setting so we may be getting some gray line effect right now from that. But either way, the antenna seems to be working well. So before the sun completely goes down, I'm going to try the 20 meter and see what happens there. Now it is getting dark and a little bit chilly to be honest so I think I'm going to wrap things up here and then tomorrow I'm going to go and try a POTA activation with this setup and see what we can do there, really put it to the test. Okay so I did do a quick activation yesterday and I was successful, I made about 25 contacts or so across 20 and 40 meters but I had some trouble with the antenna. Now of course I had it all tuned up perfectly in the yard here. What ended up happening is I let this thing sit outside for a night or two and it had sprinkled a little bit overnight. And you may be able to see here that there's a little bit of rust already starting on the area where I ground off the galvanized coating. Now I kind of expected that and I had planned to coat this when I was done but because I left it out it rusted and started to tarnish quicker than I thought it would. Anyway when I got over to the park yesterday I had trouble getting the antennas to tune like I had here in the yard because they weren't making good connection to the base here. But I think I've got a plan to work around that and we'll take a look at that next. So at this point, I've got way more time and energy and effort invested in this mount than it was worth. Um, so if you're looking at something like this, I highly suggest that you buy something commercially available or at least take notice of the things that I'm struggling with and come up with your own design that avoids all this mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of tin flashing. Well, actually, I think this is stainless steel. What I'm gonna do is cut this to size and then trace the whole pattern on here drill it out, and then put this underneath all the hardware. So the end result here is that the bracket is still the mechanical mount point for the antenna, but this piece of flashing, which won't corrode over time, will provide the electrical connectivity that I need to keep everything robust and in tune. So I'll go hack this up, we'll put it all back together and see how it works. Okay, so I've got my plate all made, a little bit crude, but it should work. Now one thing to note, uh, just like before when I was first setting up the actual antenna mount, I made sure that the hole in the center goes around the insulator part so that the plate doesn't end up shorting to the radiating part of the antenna. And for the same reason, I'm going to mount the plate on the bottom of the antenna bracket instead of the top. So I've got the 40 meter hamstick set up on the mount 
and I've double checked everything on the analyzer and I think we're in good shape. So what I'll do now is double check the rest of the ham sticks and their companion radials just to make sure everything is still okay. It, it should be, but you never know. And then I'll go and try another activation and see what happens. Hopefully this time when I get to the park, everything will work just like it is here in the yard and we should be good to go. So to keep this video from getting too long, what I decided to do was break the two POTA activations out into a separate video. So if you want to see the actual contacts I made from the field, check the link below for that video. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the first POTA activation was fine. I was able to make 25 contacts or so, but I had trouble getting the antenna kind of set up and tuned. It just wasn't working as well as it did when it was in the yard. And that's what led me to add that sheet metal plate to kind of help everything stay more connected. When I went out for the second POTA activation, it worked a lot better. Not perfect, not quite the same as it was in the yard, but I still was able to tune it and use it. And in fact, on the second POTA activation, I was able to try the 80 meter antenna, and that worked great. I made 10 or 12 contacts on that, and I would have made more contacts, but I started the activation kind of late, and it was starting to get dark again. So I had to kind of wrap it up. Hopefully in a week or two, I'll be able to get back out with this antenna, have a little more time, and maybe try and see if I can make contacts on all four bands, 15, 20, 40, and 80. So as I already mentioned in the video, I'm not so sure this antenna system is gonna work quite as well as my linked dipole that I've used on previous activations. So if I end up doing an activation where I can't put anything in the trees, can't pound anything in the ground, or I need to set up quickly, then this is the antenna that I'm gonna probably go to. So I guess that's gonna do it. Like I said, if you wanna see the actual POTA contacts, check the link below for the activation video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.